All right. Thank you all. We are going right away to today's business. And I want you to pay attention. And before we go into today's business, I would like to hear from you based on what we did in the last class. That is your ability to remember some of the things we did in the last class. So I'm going to cause, okay, let me throw it generally. Anybody that want to remind us what we did in the last class, raise your hand. I unmute you so you talk. What we did in the last class? You don't raise your hand, I will call you. I remember my policy system, if they are my class without a picture, that's in your video. I don't believe you are in my class. That is why it's a virtual class. You need to see me, I need to look at you as well to see what you are doing here with me or not. Yeah, nobody is responding. Then let me start calling names now. Yes, Omogiati Grace. Tell me what we did in our last class. Okay, so we're talking about um, <clears throat> how citizens should also help in, funda in the process of fundamental human rights. Okay, we talked about the rules. Of so you also said that right. um, you gave you gave um, some instances on how citizens should. Of citizens in fundamental rights. Okay, thank you very much, Grace. The rules of um, the government. The rules of government. That was the previous slide. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is good. It means you are you have been learning in my class. That's good. Okay, sir. Thank you. Um, let me hear from Saddam. Saddam, tell me one of the rules that you're supposed to take as a citizen to ensure that human rights are protected as stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. Madam, I'm with you. Madam. So every individual, okay. every individual should be conscious of his or her rights as, as citizens, as citizens, and be ready to claim it at any point in time. When such is violated, thank you very much, Adam. Thank you very much. I know you'll be conscious of your rights henceforth, and if anybody violates your rights, you will apply it a kind of uh, legal means to make sure that your rights are well protected. Okay? Yes, uh, Motor Shaw. Tell me another rules a citizen can play in ensuring the protection of human rights as stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. A citizen of a country can help by also protecting and helping another citizen whose rights have been violated. Okay, lending your voice to the less privileged, a fellow citizen whose rights have been violated is one of your rules. Don't close your eyes. And it was at that point I said, I quoted something from a garden power of blessed memory, which says, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. If a, the right of a fellow citizen has been violated, and you fail to act, the next person whose right to be violated may be you, may be your brother. Hence, the reason you have to what? Learn your voice for the protection of an uh, individual's uh, rights in your environment. The last person I'm going to call is Joshua. Joshua. Yes, 
The role a citizen can play to ensure the protection of human rights, as you said, is the better division of marriage of 1948. Um, by knowing your rights as a, uh, a citizen of a country, sir, by knowing your rights. Okay, as a citizen of a country, you must be conscious of your rights. It is when you know your rights, you can actually know if such has been violated. If you don't know your rights, you will know if it has been violated or not. Okay, thank you very much. It shows that some of you, or let me say majority of you, at least who have sampled the opinion, they have represented the others that you actually learned in the last uh, class. Thank you very much. Today, we were looking at agencies or groups that help to promote uh, human rights. And this agency or group will be viewed at international level. Then we we'll also look at it at a national level. We'll look at some international agencies that lend their voices for the protection of human rights, as well as some national agencies. When I say national agency, I mean some human rights groups within Nigeria, no government organizations that one way or the other form and lend their voice for the protection of human rights. That is, that will be our focus for today. And I want you to listen very well. And today's topic will mark the end of all subtopics under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. All right, here I'm going to share my screen. Okay. This, the first agency we'll be looking at here as an international group a non-governmental group that lend a voice for the protection of human rights as stated in the Nevada Declaration of Human Rights of 1948 is International Federation for Human Rights. International Federation for Human Rights. And if you look at the abbreviation, the abbreviation does not follow the way it has been pronounced. It is F I D H. Okay. It is F first before the I. It is a no partisan and independent body. And it is established with the purpose, with the core purpose of promoting respect and regard for the right of global citizen. This group. As you see the name international, has no restriction, um, uh, does not have a border. If somebody's rights have been violated in Nigeria and becomes the knowledge of FIDH, the group will take it up and render the necessary voice for the protection of the person's right whose rights have been violated either by government or by an individual. Take note, government can violate your right. Okay? Government can violate your right. Then, very close here. Okay, just show your. If you are coming, I will listen to you. But please, as I'm teaching now, note disruption. Okay. Another group, which is an international group that lend voice for the protection of human rights, is the Youth for Human Rights International. Youth for Human Rights International. The group was also a non-profit making organization founded in 2001. And you can see the person that founded is South Africa. And this lady has been influenced by the environment where he grew. Don't forget that 
until 1994, there was apartheid in South Africa, where only the whites were given the privilege to pilot the affairs of the states with infringement on the fundamental human rights of the black majority. So the environment where Mary Shockwit grew influenced her to lead or to form a group that will lend voice for the protection of human rights. You know, at times, I do tell people that it is your challenge at times that will actually make you to be wise. If you are not challenged, if you have not faced certain challenges in life, you will not know how to devise means on how to solve some problem. So some of you now, if you, are taking, if you are talking about people hungry or people going hunger, you may not understand because you have not experienced it before. And I, I don't pray that you experience such. But actually, some people, they struggle on daily basis before they will get their daily bread. Okay, so those people now that have suffered, maybe before they were, they were able to be liberated financially to overcome hunger, you will find out that, that when they become somebody, they will have the inclination to make provision that nobody go hungry, hmm? that hunger never touch anybody. The same thing that happened to Mary here, happened as in grown under a devastating apartheid policy in South Africa. She decided to launch that group in 2001 to ensure a global protection of human rights in line with the provisions of Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights, which was declared by the United Nations in, in 1948. They are close to it here. We have Amnesty International. This is a popular group that we usually hear the voice everywhere. I know for those of you that are friendly to the newspaper or your television at home, you will have heard many things about AI, Amnesty International. In fact, Amnesty International cross across border. In most cases, we see Amnesty International has in several occasions accused the Nigerian military for violating human rights, especially in the Northeast, among others. So it's an international group that seeks earnestly for the protection of human rights as stated in the judiciary of 1948. But one thing I just want you to know is that some of these international groups, they work more effectively in the area or in the country where they have their headquarters or where they have their INSs or chapters. Okay, that does not say they will not expose that evil. Okay, when evil happens in a particular place and they get to know about it, they will expose it. And when they expose it and it becomes a public knowledge, international system. Don't forget that African Union, United Nations, ECOWAS does not also sub uh, they, they don't support any form of violation of human rights. And investigation can be what carried out to unravel the rationale if what the international organizations in protection of human rights, what they are saying is actually right or not. Okay. Then they don't even go to court, but they will expose the evil. And by the time they expose the evil, attention of necessary body will be caught for necessary action to be taken. So these are the ways and orders this group help in protection of uh, human rights. Although some of them at times will decide to go to court, depending on their uh, recognition in the country where such has taken place, okay? Where you have an honest now, you can actually use your group or your member in that place to prosecute a particular case. Okay, so that is how this group work earnestly for the protection of human rights. And we also have some groups that, that can only be found in Nigeria. Okay, we have some group in Nigeria that also ensure the protection of uh, human rights. And one of these groups 
one of, there are many. Some are ethnic based, some are beyond us and are nationally based. But I'm not going to other ethnic based, I'm just going to pick some selected one whose activities have been prominent in time of protection of human rights in Nigeria. And one of them is Committee for the Defense of uh, Human Rights, CDHR. CDHR. The CDHR was a group established or formed in 1989. Okay? The CDHR was a group formed in 1989. It was formed from the group of individuals that led a protest for the freedom of a trade unionist who was detained by the military government, then a person of uh, Comrade Femi Aborishade. Femi Aborishade has been detained by the military government through the preventive uh, decree number, tw number two of 1984. Mm? The prevention decree number two of 1984 was enacted or put in place or promulgated by the the incumbent president of Nigeria, who was the head of state in Nigeria then. And the decree allowed the military government to detain anybody for as long as the military government wants for either maybe if an opinion rendered that is contrary to the ideas of the military government. So Abu Zadeh has been detained for, 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 for several weeks. And not only Aborish Ade too, there were others, other unionists that were detained in 1989. And this group led by the Aborish Ade fans that free Aborish Ade, hmm? the operation free Aborish Ade was later because of the kind of general support it galvanized from the people, changed to the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights in April 1989. Take note of that. And since then, the group has the mandate of ensuring the protection of human rights and other activities that will make human beings live a standard life in the country. Not only that, the group also collaborates with other groups within Nigeria to ensure the protection of uh, fundamental human rights. And these rights are, are stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948 by the United Nations. Take notes how the CDHR was formed. Then look at the core mandates to defend and sustain fundamental human rights and establish front avenue through which it, your group can act or get information about violation of human rights at the same time liaise with other groups in the country that have similar objective for the protection of human rights. That is Committee for the Defense of Human rights. Then we have the Constitutional Rights Project. We have the Constitutional Rights Project. The Constitutional Rights Project, formed in November 1990, basically was also to promote human rights and the rule of law in Nigeria. Take note of that. The group basically to monitor every legislation that we enhance the protection of human rights in the country and assist victims of human rights abuse or abuses. Helps to assist the victims of human rights abuses in the country. This just the summary because there's nothing more about all i want you to know is that all this group they are not governmental group they are non-governmental organization they are 
agencies formed by individual or group to ensure the protection of human rights. And this right has, has been stated in the Universal Declaration of 1948. Okay. Close to the CRP, we have the CLO, 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 that stands for Civil Liberties Organization. This, if you look at, if you, if, you look, if you look at something about all these groups that I've mentioned, they were formed during the military regime. That tells you that the situation, the violation of human rights during that period inform the individuals to form the group. That was why I told you in my last class that don't close your eyes. You are not too young to protect people's rights. You may do it directly or indirectly. Despite the, uh, the, the vehement activities of the military government to suppress any dissenting opinion against the government, some people still come together to lead protests, to form a group that agitates for the protection of human rights. So the Civil Liberty Organization was established in 1987. That was during the regime of uh, Ibrahim Badamosi of Bangida. Okay. And this happened to be one of the largest uh, uh, human rights groups in the country. And basically set up to defend human rights and expand the scope of understanding of who citizens' rights and ensure that the citizens get acquainted with their basic rights and seek redress as at when due when such rights have been violated. This group, just like the CL, the CDHR, just like the CRP, learn boys for the less privileged, whose rights have been violated in the country. And the rights they protect are in line with the Universal Declaration of Merit of 1948 as declared by the United Nations. This and many others are the major groups in the country, I mean within Nigeria, that ensure the protection of human rights in line with the Universal Declaration of Merit of 1948. Don't forget, we are looking at agencies or groups that help to ensure the protection of human rights. And the group we are looking at here, they are not governmental groups. They are not agencies of government. They are not institutions formed by the government. They are institutions or groups or uh, associations established by rights activists, by human rights activists in the society to ensure that human rights are well protected. They are not owned by the government. Yes, they are run. The people don't look at it that it is my money. Let me keep my money. They use their money to ensure the protection of uh, human rights. And I said this group, we have them at international level. We have them at uh, what? National level. We also have some that are of uh, ethnic base in Nigeria. We had one that are of ethnic base in Nigeria, but that is not our business in this place. We have the lack of uh, muscle. We have the lack of a uh, uh, progressive uh, you know, that UPU. We have the lack of uh, OPC in southern, in southwestern Nigeria, among others. Some of these, they protect the interests of their ethnic groups, and the, most of the most of what they agitate for, they are in line with the provisions of the UDHR. But they are sentimental in the sense that it is for the interests of their ethnicity. That is why those groups are not our major concern here. We are looking at those groups established of which activities cross across border. At least the activist does not know any religion or ethnic group, but anybody, black or white, green or yellow, whose rights have been violated, such rights should be what? Should be, should be, such, I think, such should get a, a kind of redress at the law court in order for the person to get justice for the rights that have been violated. So that is the summary of this uh, work as regards agencies or groups that help to ensure the protection of human rights. 
Yes, then so far so good. If you look at the topic, UDH that are taking up for some weeks now, we have learned the following. One, meaning and historical background of UDH I told you that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948 happened to be an international document that states the right holds international or global citizens are entitled to. And it was declared in 1948. And I said the committee that gave the report in 1948 actually started the work in 1946. And that was why I told you that the, they may ask you a question that the idea of UDSHA was proposed in what year? It was in 1946, but it came into effect in 1948. And I said it was established as it was adopted. The report of the committee was adopted in Paris, Lost Palace to be specific, on December 10, 1948. And that is why December 10 every year is referred to as Human Rights Day. Okay. Then we have first well looked at the seven cause rights in the UDHR. Okay. Oh, look at freedom from discrimination, freedom from torture, freedom from one right to life, among uh, others. And I told you the basic reason why those rights are the core right because some of them actually cross across others and when they are protected others will surely be what protected then we also also look at the importance of the udhr that is how it helped to lay the foundation of a right for global citizens how you have to ensure the protection of human rights among others and we have as well look at the roles of government in the UDH, that is what government has done, what government has put in place to ensure that fundamental human rights are well protected in line with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. And we look at it that government has able to entrench the right of Nigerian citizens in the constitution. For instance, in the 1999 constitution, the right of Nigerian citizens can be found in section 33, to I think 46 of that constitution, chapter four to be specific. And government has also established National Human Rights Commission, uh, the, the Legal Aid Council of Nigeria, the, the, the National the Agency for the Provision of Trafficking in Person, and the, the, so, the, the Public Compliance Commission, among others, among others, to ensure that rights of individual citizens are well protected, especially those people that have nothing or quiz they need legal aid in order to ensure the protection of their human rights. And we have as well look at the roles of individual in the UDHR. That is what you and I can do to ensure the protection of human rights as said in the Declaration of Human Rights. I was our last class and quiz some of you were able to re-echo the other time when I asked you a question, you must know your right, that's number 10, number one. Two, you must always ready to seek redress when those have been violated. You must protect the interest, the right of others. You must join groups or association or campaign against any form of a violation of human rights. And also provide necessary facilities or money to people whose rights have been violated. These are the rules that you must take as an individual. And today we have looked at the rules of groups in the UDHR. And the groups we looked at here, they are non-governmental organizations. When I say non-governmental groups, they are eight groups or associations formed by individuals who are not in government. They are not BP, they are not profit-making groups. And this group, I said they could be international group, they could be, uh, they can also be what? National group. And I'll give instances how these groups help to protect human rights in line with the provision of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. So far, so good. These are what we have done as regard the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. And as a matter of fact, it is, my, it is time now to take question from you. Yes, the message that comes in we are excited that we open the message now. It is time for a question. Yes, I'm going to take your question right here. Let me see the message I have there. Okay. 
Okay, we could not but there's no problem. I had you. You can always have the recorded video later. Network is bad. Yes, question time. The questioner here may not just only be what we did today, but because we are closing the chapter on universal declaration of human rights today. So from the beginning to the end, I want to take your question. If you have question, raise your hand. I will recognize you. Okay, my students are not raising hands. It's me that they have understood everything. Then it will be in my own time to ask you a question. <laughs> Even you are sharing my screen of your words. It is okay. Ah, somebody wrote Sandy and just lower the hand immediately. Ooh, okay, Joshua. Okay, Joshua, what is your question? Um, I'm sorry, you said that um, the government can can also like oppress our rights. Yes. Um, how do we fight for our rights even when it is government on that on that oppressing our rights? Okay. The question is that government can I said that government can also violate your rights. Yes. And how do you seek redress if government has actually violated your rights? I gave an instance last in my last class about uh, one uh, Okuli, post right was infringed upon. Let me see if I can still get it here. Post right was infringed upon by the DSS. The DSS is an agency of government. And when the man rights have been violated, the man decided to go to court, okay? DSS is, is part of government. Is the DSS, that the Department of State Service, it's under the control of uh, executive, under the control of the presidency. And the man's right was violated. What the man, what did he do? He decided to approach law courts. And he went to court. At the law courts, actually, he sought for a 500 million naira collateral damage for his illegal detention. And at the end of the day, the, the as in, the court said, no, Anana is not guilty. That is the daughter of February. Because she was not in Nigeria when, she, when the man was arrested. Therefore, he couldn't have had hand in the detention by the DSS. So then MTN was also exonerated. But DSS was made to pay 10 million naira. Hmm? 10 million naira for the man in for detaining him illegally. If you see him from the rear end, what I have here, the rear end, that is the man, okay, called uh, uh, one uh, Okuli, was arrested for using a SIM card formerly used by the daughter of uh, Muhammad Dwari Hanana. So, and MTN recycled the line when she was not in Nigeria. You know, when you don't use your line for, uh, th I think, three months, it will be recycled and to be sued. That was really what happened. So this man approached the court. Government violates his right. He also get yourself from the government. But it's not the same uh, uh, organs that violated his right. That, that is not where they got the, the right protected. It, it got the right protected in the judiciary. OK? And that is why we always clamor for independence of the judiciary. In a country where the judiciary is totally independent and it, has, it does not have any influence from the other organs of government. If your rights have been violated, you can actually approach the court. If the president, if the legis anybody in the legislative arms of government, even if in the, the judiciary violates your court, all these things, all these I have mentioned constitute the government, you have the right to go to the court. In the court, nobody is going to use in their own discretion. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use the provisions of the Constitution. If you're able to match your point constructively with uh, clinical evidence or evidences, you will get justice. So government can violate your right. In case of this Okoli, government violated his right and same, from the same government that they got justice. And what, what is not from the executive arms of government, but from the judiciary. OK, your rights can be violated by the government. But it seems from the government, you also get uh, justice. But that the means of getting justice 
is by going to the courts, going to the law courts to seek redress. Okay? Going to the law court to seek uh, redress. I have, uh, have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Divine, I will not recognize you. You know me. Turn off your video, erase your hand, I will not recognize you. Another question? Any other question? Okay. Now, I'm going to ask question now. Let me see. Okay. Let me know those that are with me. Yes. Emmanuel. Yes, sir. Can you tell me one of the portions of the of the CDHR? Of um, protection of human rights. For your information, I always advise you. When you want to make a statement, make sure you make a statement in a constructive manner. Hmm? It helps to protect human rights. Hmm? Not yes, just sir. protection of human rights, please. Okay, sure. Yes, sir. Can you tell me? Because you come late to this class. The role played by you and I, the role that can be played by you and I to ensure the protection of human rights. Um, we should not be negligent. In what if sense? See anything that, but if if we see an, in the right of any individual. The way you are teaching. Any individual being violated, we should not show indifference. Okay, you should learn a voice for the protection of human rights. The way you are talking actually show your position. You are lying down and you are listening. You are, you are attending my class. Hmm? You should not be negligent. You should learn a voice to, for the protection of human rights. Divine, let me hear your question now. So, are there other, uh, like, can you give us other examples of other groups? Other that other groups that like promote human rights. Yes. And we have well, we have them many. We also we have uh, the like of human rights Africa. Hmm? Like you come late to my class. We have human rights Africa as another group that promotes human rights as state in the universal education of human rights. We also have the, the, the like in West Africa. We have with something like West African people's uh, uh, Association for Human Rights or something like that. And I said something before, maybe when we were not here, I said we also have, like in Nigeria, Nigeria, we also have some ethnic based group. Are you with me, Divine? Yes. Mm -hmm. We have some ethnic based group that help to protect human rights. But I said the reason they are not major focus here is the fact that those people, they only agitate for human rights based on the members of their world. They are ethnic groups. We have the like of UPU, eh? Rubo Progressive Union. We have the like of OPC, okay, Odua People's uh, Congress. We have the like of Arewa Consultative Forum, among others, okay? So they are ethnic based. They only are for the rights of their groups or their, the members of their ethnic uh, groups. But the majorly, the one, that agitate for the group for the rights of individuals across border within the country. And what I have stated, okay, they are looking at the perspective of no government at this time around. There are agencies of government that ensure protection of human rights. Okay, aside the one I have even taught you. But here we are looking at the one that are not owned by government, that are, that are run by uh, activists, individuals that come together to make sure that rights of people are well protected. And the major one that what I have mentioned, CRP, CLO, and CDHR. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, in absence of further question, 
I will close the class for today. And uh, I'm wishing all of you happy 